Welcome to the Eliza OS Developers YouTube channel. I'm Young Algorithm. Today we're going to go over plugins for episode four. We're going to go over the plugin system, how the registry works, how plugins are packaged via NPM, and how to manage environment variables in your CLI or in your IDE. So let's get started. I'm just going to create a test project here. And if anything I'm doing is unfamiliar to you, please watch the previous videos. So I'm just creating a basic project. I'm going to use PG Lite and I'm going to use OpenAI. I'm copy and pasting in my API key. And then I'm going to CD into that and open it up in cursor. Now, here we are, our standard project file. We have our main entry points here, which we went over on previous videos. Uh, here's our default character file, where plugins are defined here. All the personality stuff is defined here. Here's our test plugin, and here's our index file. And here in our ENV, we can see the OpenAI key and the PG light are here, which we set up during the setup process. Here's the PG light database right here. And then everything else, you know, we have node modules, dist, scripts, and then all of these config files, package JSONs, readmes, whatever. Great. Now, how do we add a plugin? Well, we went over it the other day. One way that you can do it is you can add a plugin here in this array, basically, right? Another way that you can do it is through the CLI. So let's look at the plugins command. You can see here that plugins list is going to show us available plugins to install. We can install them or remove them with add and remove. And we can see what plugins are installed right now with installed plugins. These commands down here, upgrade and generate, are considered more experimental at this time, so we're not going to focus on those today. So, Eliza OS, plugins, installed plugins. This shows us what plugins are installed in our current project, ASD, ASD. If I were to go back into my desktop, this is just my normal desktop, it's going to be like, you don't have any plugins because I'm not in an Eliza OS project, right? Okay. So now I'm back in and let's do list. List is gonna show me all the possible plugins that I can add. And what's happening under the hood here is it's actually pulling this list from the Eliza OS plugins repository, which I'm gonna show you. Here it is. It's actually different than our regular repo. Our regular repo is just Eliza OS, right? But this one is, you know, Eliza OS dash plugins. Um, and here we have the registry, which is an index of all of the plugins, basically. You can see some main ones are here. And then the actual plugin code is all in here. So if you wanted to see any plugin, it's going to be Eliza OS dash plugins slash and then the plugin name, like plugin dash Olama or whatever open router. So I'm going to use Discord for today's example. Let's click into Discord. We can see here there's a readme. Now, when we run the command to add Discord to our project, add Discord, what it's actually doing under the hood is it's using an NPM package. So we can see here that it's successfully installed, right? And now it's asking me for credentials that it needs, API token. I'm just gonna fill in random stuff right now. We'll come back to this later. These are optional, so I'm gonna skip them. Nice. So now that is in there, it's installed. If I run this command, installed plugins, we should see Discord in the list. And we do, which is great. So what's happening in the background 
just so you're aware is that this NPM package is getting loaded because we didn't actually add, you know, the plugin Discord repo or anything into this project. It's loading this through NPM. And if you're very curious or slightly more technical, just if you're curious, this is a file that maps the NPM packages to the GitHub repo. So if I click this, I can see, I'm just gonna pick a random one. So we can see here that CoinGecko is in this GitHub location, see Git, and then it's in this NPM location, right? And V1 is true. Awesome. Okay, so now that you understand just a little bit about what goes on under the hood with plugins, how they're packaged, where to find the source code if you need to see it. If you wanna use the plugin as it's just intended, you probably don't need to get into the source code or whatever, but now you understand a little bit about that. And we will have videos later on about creating your own custom plugins and publishing those plugins to this registry, right? But for now, we're just gonna keep going. So we've added Discord and we can see, we know it's added because we can see it here. So we need to add the environment variables for it to work. And here you can see that the nonsense that I typed in came into our env file. So if I try to start the Eliza server with these as the keys, obviously it's not gonna work. And this is something that we can change in the IDE if you prefer, or we can use the env command, which is handy. So if I type env help, I can list and see that, okay, here are my keys, right? And I can edit, I can reset. So if I do, Eliza OS reset, that's going to wipe this. Uh, Eliza OS EMV interactive. See, list environment variables, edit or reset basically allows you to do the same things, frankly. So why don't we edit this one? We want to edit. I'm just going to copy and paste this off camera. See that and then discord application ID I'm also going to copy and paste and it there awesome so now those are in back to the menu exit so now I'm just here and if we run env list we can see that these have been updated we also expect them to be updated in our IDE which it is so great we added the Discord plugin and we added the environment variables. And just to be clear, Discord is kind of a special one because it's already here and there's some conditional logic that basically just says, hey, if you know this value is not null, if it's in the EMV, then add the plugin, right? So we're not, I'm not actually needing to type, you know, uh, at like, whatever or telegram or anything like that to add like we did in the last video because it's getting conditionally added here all right great so why don't we start this thing up then so it's building the project la 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 let's go to localhost we have eliza here Talk to Eliza in the GUI. Eliza responds. We can see the plugins are all here listed correctly. And we have another thing we can do now. We can go over to Discord and let me just go here. And we can see Eliza is actually online. That's because my server is running. Right, and we've added the Discord plugin. Uh, 
Now, there's a, a few other things you need to configure, but not really a lot. You basically just need to go to the developer documentation and, and go through the steps to get those links that I, those keys that I copy and pasted in. So now we can see here, we're able just in a couple minutes to talk to our agent on Discord and also over here on localhost. We went over using this command, excuse me, this command, Eliza OS env. You understand that you can use this to augment and alter your keys from the CLI. You can also do that from the IDE here. And we also went over more in depth. We went over it the other day too, the plugins command specifically install plugins list and really what's going on under the hood with list and gave an introduction into the Eliza OS plugins repo, which I mean, technically it's an organization, I suppose, uh, with many repos, which is really important to understand the nuance. Sometimes people get confused and look in the regular Eliza uh, organization for plugin stuff, but that's just not where they are. So now you know, and we've got another video coming for you guys shortly. So thanks for joining us today.